some people ask me why I kept making videos. Well, to keep it short, I'm called to do this. I'm anointed to do this. That's why I keep doing it. And I've seen through all this ministry that people need this. Okay? I'm not putting myself on a pedestal here. here. Christ did. And he's the So this platform I have, and this influence I have, comes from the Most High. If you have an issue with it, pick it up with him. Okay? Now, in this video, I want to talk about the impact of language structures and how it relates to human sexuality. I want, I want to link the two together because they are connected, but most people don't see it. Let me say it like this. Oh, you're looking angry at me, no problem. Okay. Let, me, let me say it like this. The way you communicate with other people affect how you perceive yourself. And this self-perception, if it's not in line with Christ, it becomes a curse unto you. Now the world is run by wizards, we know that. I've explained that often already. The, the pagan rules of this world, or better said the wizards, they construct language in such a way that you debate yourself without you being aware of it. One way they do it is by having two words for you. For example, in Dutch you have u and jij. Jij is, is considered informal and u is considered an, well, let me say, an exalting way of saying you to someone. In English you have tau and you. The tau is not used anymore in British English. There's some that use it, but okay, so a very few. You have Z and Du in German. You can continue like that. That's one way of debasing yourself. In the English language, eventually they drop the Tao first you, they just use you right now, because English was meant to become a common language for commerce. And you can't have a common language for commerce in which many people want to contribute and, they, and they're debasing themselves. Because you want more people to be involved in the international economy that you, they need to feel included. So if you use a language in which they debase themselves, how is that going to work? How, how, how is that going to affect their participation? It's going to hinder their participation. So that's why in the, Brit, in the British language, now the English language, rather said, they dropped Tao versus you. Okay? But this whole uh, formality of uh, of having a special word for you because someone is older or someone has a position is a form of debasement towards yourself. You need to agree that you're a lesser of a being than the other for the system to work. Now look, if you have folks in construction and one takes the lead of the operation, of course you can acknowledge that individual is leading the, co uh, the operation and you collide together. That's practical. I'm not talking about that, but it goes too far to debase yourself, to venerate some system. That's what it's about. In some Asian languages, for example, Korean and Japanese, not only do you have uh, verb tenses that debase yourself, but you also expect to use uh, expensive words when addressing, for example, a CEO or an em employer or even your parent, or one of your parents. Some people say, well, she just felt respect. The well, respect is granting validation based on fearful motives. That's what respect really is, okay? Ask yourself, why do you need to debase yourself for another human being and both of you need oxygen to remain alive in, this, in these bodies? What's the use of debasing yourself to make them feel at ease? Why do you need to validate them at your expense? You may think, Rashid, well, why, why does this matter? Think about it this way. If you had parents that use psychological abuse on you, but you were told it's the right thing, then you have been you have been taught how to validate others at your own expense. And you have been taught that you're not allowed to intervene when things go out of hand because you need to mind your own business. So you have been taught to be, be, be an enabler to narcissistic violence. That's, what you, that's how you've been conditioned. And in the language, this is reflected. So this conditioning in you becoming narcissistic supply is conditioned in the language. So when you, when you based on this conditioning of the language, communicate with, with others, you are validating this debasement of yourself, which goes against Christ. So you are 
reprogramming yourself over and over again when you use that language structure. With language structure, I'm not talking about spelling rules or, or grammar in itself, because grammar and spelling are intended to make language understandable. For example, um, that you write certain words in cer with certain letters is to make it understandable to others. That you use a certain verb tense so that people can understand that you're whether you're discipline in, in the here or in now or the discipline in the past, that's understandable. But I'm talking about when language structures become gods that you can't question. Okay? There's a danger. For example, in the Portuguese language, maybe it has changed now, but you don't really have a word for a married woman. Marido means a married man, but you have no marida, means a married woman, it doesn't exist. So women are not considered marriage partners in the language. Where does this come from? This comes from uh, the medieval times in which the male well, ha had all the political rights and the females, well, yeah, they were there. And this is not an absolute thing. There were females in the Middle Ages that had influence, okay? But overall, it was a patriarchal structure in which females were not considered. And in the language, this was reflected. So, so if you would speak to Zhang, for example, you would ask how his woman is. You wouldn't ask him how his wife is, because there is no word. There wasn't a word in Portuguese for a married woman. So you signify in this communication that women are debased, really. So in language, the being rules of this world, invest the structures, and the structures are transferred onto you by your parents, by your peers, by schools. So without them being aware of it, they're conditioning you into debasing yourself and to see yourself as an inferior, pathetic being that is validation of, of society. That happens in all societies. Now, you can circumvent this as a believer by adapting how you speak about things. For example, instead of asking how expensive is it, ask how cheap it is. If, instead of asking how old are you, ask how young are you. It has an effect on you. It has an effect on your mind. It has an effect on the mind of those that hear you. Instead to hide, I'm saying this, instead, instead of teaching people how to communicate in a graceful, Christ-centered way, they tell you, just don't use certain taboo words, but those are swear words. If you avoid those words, you're okay. That's a lie, because those taboo words are only taboo words because people agree those words are bad words. So you're conditioned to hate certain words, and because you hate those words, you think that you are righteous. It's self-righteousness that's conditioned into you through the language. Now, how does this relate to human sexuality? Well, human beings are sexual beings. We know that. Just think about this. Human sexuality, as I explained before, is male energy in action. The male emits and the female transmits. That's the natural order that Christ designed. So there needs to be communication between the two. Now, human sexuality isn't just about the physical action of sex. It also has to do with how you relate to the opposite sex, how you relate to one another. So understand the following. If your way of communication is self-debasing, then the way you relate to the opposite sex will also be in a self-debased manner. And the Babylonian, um, I would say, version of manhood is a male that, that emotionally does not develop after the age of 12 and becomes subservient and codependent on the female. That's the Babylonian uh, version of manhood. This is reflected in Nimrod, Semiramis and their son Tammuz. And the Semiramis was also the mother of Nimrod. So that's incest right over there. The Greeks, beginning with Pythagoras, and it was solidified under Apollo, whom they also call Alexander the Great, they had another version of manhood. And that manhood is really a mathematical psychopath. A male should be focused on mathematics, analytic calculation, away from females. So the, the vision of manhood, according to the ancient Greeks, which, has, which is the version of manhood that is adopted internationally by the world, because the world system of today is based on the Greco-Roman uh, world, is of a homosexual 
mathematical psychopaths. That's the image of a male, according to the world. So both of them are against Christ. The Greek version appears to be biblical because there appears to be development in it, but it's not. Okay, so patriarchy is really the, I would say, the sociological and to some extent the economic version economical version of manhood of the ancient Greeks and Romans which appears biblical but it's not and this false version of manhood is expressed in language look that in language you always uh, use the he as standard that's understandable okay I'm not talking about that okay I'm talking about in language they teach you to venerate old older men as a male that's homosexuality right over there because you should only venerate Christ, who is the male. The Creator is the male, you should only venerate Him. But in language, He make you, as a man, venerate older men. That's both incestual and homosexual. Okay? But even if you're not a practicing homosexual yourself, you are into women, this still drags you into, into um, magnetic sodomy or energetic homosexuality. That's what the, the big rules of the world want you in as a male, in energetic homosexuality, in the sense that you rely on the attraction of another man, often older men. Yes, you can have elders in a community, okay? But you don't venerate the elders, okay? The elders are, elders are, are sociological and social pillars in that community. So you should give them honor for that, but at the same time, they're honorable towards the community. They shouldn't get honor unconditionally because they're older men, and now you need to bend over to their will no matter what. That's energetic homosexuality right over there. And the big rules of this world, they condition you into energetic homosexuality through language. Some people think, you know what, that's why we need to use ancient Hebrew. Well, ancient Hebrew had dialects, so which dialect are you going to use? Okay, and even then, there were language structures of self-debasement. Now, energetic homosexuality is really a thing of the ancient Greeks and Romans, that the big, and the big rulers of today are following the tradition of the ancient Greeks and Romans, because they worship Apollo, or also called Helios, the son of God. Okay? This whole world system, which is led by the Western world, centers around Apollo. Okay? And according to Revelation chapter 9, verse 11, he is the Antichrist. He's the son of perdition. I've explained, explained that before. So using Hebrew or Aramaic is not the answer. If you speak Spanish, you speak Spanish. If you speak Vietnamese, you speak Vietnamese. Just pay attention to how you refer to yourself in those languages. And if you realize that there's a negative uh, inclination in the language towards you as a human being, then circumvent it. I always use examples, ask how young someone is, ask, ask how cheap something is. If you do such stuff, you do not give in to, to a language structure unconditionally. Yes, you have grammar rules, spelling rules. Those are just to make things understandable when you communicate with someone else. I, you, I can understand that. Just pay attention to how you are expected to communicate about yourself towards someone else. Okay? For example, in Japanese, yeah, you have these formalities in which people keep apologizing all the time. It appears cute to Westerners, but when you look how it affects people in that country, there's a high, there's a high suicide rate. Even have a thing called a suicide force over there, which where many people go, especially men, go to end their lives. And there's stagnation in society also. I'm not here to talk about the problems of Japanese society, but you also have a huge problem of teenage killers over there. Since the 1990s, the problem there is still increasing. And you also have the decreasing population because in sexual affairs, the people don't relate that well to one another. Well, it's, it doesn't all come from the language structure, but it has to do with, partly to do with the language structure also. If you have to debase yourself continuously in communication, it's going to affect your mind. It's going to affect your ability to operate as a spirit being, and it can hinder you in walking by faith. Okay? It seriously can. That's why I'm talking about this. I mean, I mean, saying that you need to throw away your native language, no. Just circumvent the satanic structures in language. 
because those satanic structures are intended to affect your human sexuality, especially as a male, to make you um, vulnerable to paranormal parasites. That's what it's all about, because this world system is based on draining male energy. Human beings are spirit beings, we're energetic creatures. Male energy is heavy, intense, because it's a reflection of, of God's power itself, and uncle spirits want the monopoly on male energy. They want to drain all men of all ages everywhere, whether it's just a two-year-old male baby or a 110-year-old male, it doesn't matter. They want to drain all men everywhere, and through language structures, or through satanic language structures, they do this. Okay? Circumvent satanic language structures, no matter which language you speak. Okay? Because it affects you. Well, that's it for now. Keep agreement with Christ and be at peace.